Okay, using a hand tap, letting it find its own way. Um, slowly feed it into one of the 3.5mm holes. This is an 832's tap. Do um, two or three turns in, a few turns out, two or three turns in, out, so on. So that as you creating the thread, you're allowing the waste material to come out from the hole. Otherwise, you're going to end up either naffing the thread or damaging your um, tap. Right, so I'm going to tap that hole out now, get the plate mounted on there, and then I'll do the other three holes in the plate. The reason don't tap the other three holes out um, before drilling the plate is because obviously I don't want to end up damaging the threads. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Having put a small mark on the work, so I know which hole is the one I've tapped out, screwing the plate back onto the surplus um, lens back. Okay, that's on there. Yeah. screws into the tapped hole with no problems. Now going to uh, mount the plate on there. You might find that with that having been a 3.5mm drill bit, you might just have to pass the tap through it. Or if you wanted you could tap a bigger drill bit through it, but I prefer to just to uh, pass the 3.5mm drill bit through it. The same with all three of the other holes then I'm not actually taking any material away that's going to be used for threading into. OK, I'm going to do that next. Having set the milling machine up to be exactly 180 degrees off from where we were to a previously drilled drill bit, swing the piece of scrap metal round till it's totally covering, tighten up the back screw, drill down to create the front one, then that will be then tapped out, so that leaves the two securing points. Then what I'll simply do is remove the screw, line up the milling machine again for the next screw, drill it through, um, line up for the other screw, I put the screw in, drop back down again, that leaves the four holes, then just tap them out and away you go. Okay, having tapped out the next hole that was 90 degrees off to the first hole to fix the piece of scrap and it's just like I say, this piece of scrap has been cut with an angle grinder at some point as long as the initial plate is okay that's all that matters ok I'm going to screw that back on there now and fix the second screw and then uh, carry on with the other two screws having lined up for the third hole All I'll simply do is swing the plate back around, lock it back into place. I'm going to screw that all the way in and then just pop that drill hole straight the way through. OK, I've set up for the last and final hole. So what I'll do, I'll lock this into place and then drill the last hole and then we'll be ready to move back over to the lathe. OK, we now have all four holes tapped. The screws in, we've got the plate stuck to the back. Now I'm going to screw that back onto there and mount it into the lathe. And uh, to turn it round so we end up the same as what we've got there. Okay. Okay, this could be potentially very dangerous. So take your time and that with this well, think about it. You know, plate and metal spinning at a high speed, so... Really, really take your time. And cut slowly through the plate. Otherwise you could uh, bind your tool up and that could be really bad news. OK, I'm going to start to machine that now. What you'll start to do is you'll start to break through that plate. Okay. 
going slowly, very gently. Okay, it's important to stop from time to time to clean the tooling and also check on your progress. As you can see that's coming along nicely. Now I'm going to continue to do the machine. Okay, I'm through and the waste is now spinning freely. Okay, so all I need to do now is break away the waste. Carefully not to cut my fingers. There you go. Now I'm ready to start machining that down to the diameter of the piece that it's mounted to. So I'm going to proceed to do that now. Okay, that's that one completed. All it needs doing is a centre marking, centre dock punching, then the centre drilling out to take the shaft of the servo motor. One thing, one last thing to mention on this is uh, while it's still in the lathe, you probably find that with machining, you'll find that this is really tightened up because it's being pushed tighter all the time. So using something like this is just a, an old pair of nose pliers which I don't use anymore. Put it into the two socket cap screws and then you'll be able to use that to help you to lever to unscrew it. So if you're trying to grab onto there to unscrew it, it's going to be very difficult to do. So, so that's that done. So we've now got two of those. Okay, ready for the next stage.